button. Don't forget your merge recordings on and then go into your instrument and we can start playing with our knobs. The merge recordings function in GarageBand can really help you create songs, whether you're using drums or keys or pretty much any instrument. So let's dive in and take a look, shall we? If you're trying to learn to play drums here on the touch screen, you'll probably be uh, like me. You'll be like, there's too much going on here. What we can do though, is use a very cool function in here, which is the merge recordings function to layer up our sound. Instead of having to do it all at once, we can layer it up. Now to access merge recordings, we tap on our little mixer icon here. We go to track settings and we go to the recording options. And this one here, if you find that this is off, turn that on, merge recordings on. Because what this means is that when we play our first run through, we can then play another run through and record it over the top. I'll show you what that means as we go through here. So let's come in here. I'm gonna record just the kick drum of this drum beat. We're just gonna do four bars. So let's hit record. It's gonna count us in and we're gonna go. Pretty boring, yeah? Not really much going on there. But here's the cool thing. If we didn't have this merge recordings section on, what it would do is if we try to record something else, it's actually gonna record straight over the top of that. What we can do with merge recordings though is actually layer up our sound. So let's hit the record button here and let's add our snare. There you go. So now we've got the kick and the snare drum here. And look at that. It's added them both together. Let's come in here because those snare hits were not super cool. Because I'm using my mouse. I'm using my mouse here to hit the snares. So let's come in here. And we'll, we'll grab that. And we can change the velocity of some of these. So some of these snare hits that were a bit wussy. Oh, let's just bring it up. This is one of the problems with the, uh, the mouse here. There you go. You want that sort of velocity, don't you? Yeah, you want it to hit a bit harder. I should have used the touch screen. Never, never use a mouse to try and uh, to try and actually play instruments here in GarageBand. We'll fix the rest later. The other thing you can do though is, of course, then add in other bits and pieces. So you can add in your hi hat here and some crashes as well. So if we'll, uh, what we'll do actually, we'll turn off the kick and crash at the same time. So we'll come back in. Whoop, wrong spot. We'll come back to our track settings and uh, we want to make sure that we have this turned off because we don't want another bass drum with the cymbal. And I like that GarageBand calls it a bass drum, not a kick drum. That's a bit cool. So let's hit record again and let's add in our hi-hats. I'll use my finger this time. And then that uh, hit at the end. So uh, I haven't played that particularly well, but you can see the power of this here, that it'll just layer up and then you can add in more and more instruments as you go through. So that's your drums, but you can use this for a lot of other things as well. So let's show you how to use merge recordings for some keys, shall we? So we'll hit the plus button here and to go with these drums, we want some uh, key sounds. I want an organ on this one. So let's come in here to our keyboards. We'll go to keys and we'll go down to the classic rock organ. Yeah. All right. And what we want to do is we want to play an organ sound here. But if I'm not a very good keyboardist and I'm not, let's say I want to do it. I want to do that sort of sound up in the top end, but I don't want to have to play the bass at the same time. We can use the same concept. So we can come in here. We can make sure that merge recordings is on under our recording option here. Boom. And then if we hit the record button, let's record in the first part. There you go. Sounds like a sounds like a rejected Doors B side at this point. Uh, and I played that one octave too low. So the first thing we want to do is actually change that. So we'll just jump in here and we'll go to our settings, and we will bring it up an octave just to make it sound like we wanted to. Cool. And now if we wanted to add the left hand to this, this is where especially for keys it comes in super handy. The with merge recordings on. We just want to add that part in here. Now we can just hit record and we'll get both of these in here. Mm -hmm. 
There you go. We've got that nice Hammond B3 organ sound going on there. And uh, you can have both together. Now, of course, you can obviously duplicate this out and you can record it onto two separate tracks anyway. But if you start running out of tracks, you may want to use the merge recording function to do this together. Okay, that's the simple way to use merge, right? There's, there's some cooler stuff though. And I'm going to go into the cool stuff now. So if we were to use something a little bit more special, so let's say we wanted to use something that had some, some knobs. So let's use a synth pad that's got a few knobs in here. Let's go with the, um, the Day Spa synth pad here. Yeah, we'll do something like this. So let's just um, record a little bit of this. We'll just turn the volume up a bit so that we can hear this over our other instruments. Once again, we're going to come into the instrument. We're going to make sure that our merge recordings is on because we're going to play around with this now. And we're going to hit record and we're going to play in a part. And there you go. We've recorded that part in. What am I going to show you here now? Well, I'm going to show you something pretty cool. And that is that recording with the merge option is not just for adding new notes, it's for adding effects as well. So yes, we can actually record in and write in some effects on the fly here using the merge recordings option. So for something like this, we've only got a few knobs here. We've got like out this filter LFO here. So if you play a note... <laughs> We can move that up and down and create a cool kind of effect sound. And here's the thing. If we hit the record button, we can actually dial this in in real time. Let's give it a try. There you go. So we can actually use an automated filter here, which is not something you can do with GarageBand automation, of course, but we can hack around it by using it like this, which is pretty darn cool. So now when we play this back, let's go back to the instrument and check out what's happening to that knob. I'll take my hands away and check out the knob. Look, Ma, no hands. Pretty cool, yeah? So you can record all of your knob movements and you might think, well, that, that's fine, but there's only such limited amounts of knobs there. <laughs> limited knobs. That was my uh, high school uh, synth band. Limited knobs. Now, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the stage. Limited knobs. No, it wasn't really. Uh, so we're going to try the Epic Cloud Formation, which is one of my favorite alchemy synth sounds. But of course, you can change your synth sounds by coming in here and choosing whatever you want. But you just want to come in here to alchemy synths and pads and then one of your things here. And uh, what we can do now, let's get a bit of a cool sort of pitched. We'll do a little pitched bit in here and then I'll show you how we can play around with it. So we've got a very simple sort of single note pitch change doing all of that there. We'll turn that one up and that one down here. Once again, all we need to do is make sure that we have the merge recording. It is our magic button. Don't forget your merge recording's on. And then go into your instrument and we can start playing with our knobs. Now, of course, what you could do is you could... You could use the slider here to do things, or you can scroll across and you can use your XY pads here. And you can change anything. You can change your, your low frequency oscillator. Adjust the cutoff. Your modulation. And you can do multiple passes of this which is kind of cool. So let's let's do this. First of all, what we'll do is I kind of liked just this flanger, moving this flanger out. So if we record and uh, play with our flange. Do, 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 do. There you go. Our flange is now in there if we play it back. Pretty cool, yeah. And then uh, let's play around with, um, what was the other thing? The cutoff was kind of cool to play. Or maybe our delay. Maybe we'll just load up and delay here and change this around a bit. Two, three, let's do it. There you go.
you go. So you can actually just change this up and start experimenting with it. The weird thing, the thing to be cautious of with all of this, and the final thing I'll mention about the merge recording function is you can't go back and individually control things. So you can get yourself into quite a bit of trouble doing this. The reason being is that now that I've added these two changes, everything else, if I go to try and change it back, so say I didn't like that flanger move again, if I try to record over the top and stop it, it like, it's already happening and I have to like hold it back because the automation points are there already and you end up getting something that's like that and then it's going to be something like this. <laughs> so here's my tip on this. Before you play around with this, before you start playing with your knobs, here, if your parents didn't tell you this, before you commence playing with your knobs, make a backup copy first. It just lost it a bit there. So make a backup copy of your actual instrument. So all you do is go in here and duplicate that out. Call this one No Knobs and call this one Go Your Hardest. And then you can have your original sound here. And then this is your experimentation with all your knobs. And that is how you could use your merge recording functions here in GarageBand. If you've never played around with it, uh, do go and play around with it. Oh, wait, there's one more thing. I want to show you perhaps the coolest thing of the merge recordings function. And that is, we can auto merge. We can merge our wah. We can control the guitar wah. So if we use the retro wah, which is a cool little guitar sound here, we'll just go to the chords, the notes view here. Let's just record in some guitar, shall we? Don't know about that last note. That was a wee bit dodge. Guess what we can do? Yeah, there's no real way. Like you can... It's really hard, unless you've got like multiple hands, to play your guitar and adjust your wah. But you know what we're going to do here. We're going to go to recording. We're going to do merge recordings on. And we're going to be able to wah it up here. So let's hit the record button. I'm not going to play in now because I'm going to use the notes that are already there. And I'm going to change our wah. Ready? There you go. Not the most amazing wah experience ever, but look at this. We can come back in here and when we play it back, again with no hands. Wah for days. So basically anything that you could add in terms of playing in extra instruments and playing in extra notes and adding in knob movements and adjusting effects and doing everything, you can adjust simply by using that. And uh, even if you wanted to do something like turn on and off the, the boost here, you can do the same thing. Oops, go back to the start and hit record again. So say we wanted the treble boost on there. Turn it off. Back on. So if you were adding another guitar and you were doing, say, a, a 90s Nirvana-style distortion where you wanted to kick on a distortion pedal halfway through a song, guess what? You can do it all on one track.